Hello everyone! Uh, today I'm going to share with you how to wear a kimono with uh, professional and expert staff. So by the way, kimono are a traditional Japanese form of clothing worn by both men and women. Kimono is a garment that is uniquely Japanese. No other people group has a style of dress like it. Today, it is a common sight to see Japanese and foreign visitors alike strolling through historic neighborhoods in Kyoto, Tokyo, and other parts of Japan. Wearing rental kimono is an endless variety of styles and colors. Though most people only rent kimono, used kimono are an an expensive softener that can be found at many used kimono shops around Japan. So come along with me and let's find out how this Japanese and expert professional how to put on kimono on me. Okay, let's see and look at this a professional Japanese man. So come along with me and let's find out how this professional and expert Japanese man how to put kimonos on me. Okay, look, they are uh, trying to find out what kind of colors that are uh, much for me. So what do you need to wear a kimono? There are several garments and accessories necessary for wearing kimonos some of which are necessary while others are optional. Well, the kimono is the garment itself. It can be made of silk, linen, cotton, wool, or polyester. There are many types of kimono, though the most recognizable is the forisodi, with long sleeves that nearly touch the ground. Forisodi are worn by unmarried women and are sometimes associated with Maiko, the girl studying to become Gisha. Due to the length of the sleeves, Forizodi are not the most practical kimono to wear. By the way, dressing in kimono might take some practice, but following these five steps will help you get started in experiencing dressing and kimono by yourself. It is assumed you will already be wearing undergarments when you begin a sports bra and women's briefs are a good basis. So number one, put on the tabi. This is often overlooked first step, but putting on tabi sucks up. After getting dressed in kimono can be tricky. At the very least, it increases the chances that something will slip out of place as you bend and twist to get your tabby socks on. And number two, put on the traditional undergarments. Put on the susuyuki or long johns if you prefer. First, then the hadajuban. Make sure that hadajuban is centered on your torso and pull it down on the back him to expose the back of your neck. Do not tuck the other juban into the susuyaki or long johns. So step three, but put on the naga juban. You need to have an airy shin which slides under the collar to keep it stiff and wrinkle free. If you don't have one, you can use rolled up and flattened washi paper to push into your collar. Center your naga juban on your body, leaving a space the width of your fist between the collar and the back of your neck. And step four, put on the kimono. Center the kimono on your body by matching the lower seams of the collar to each other in front of your body. If one seam is higher than the other, the kimono is not centered. Don't pull it too tight, but align it with the back of the Naga Juban collar. The two collars should be the same height at the back, but the Naga Juban collar should show by one or two centimeter at the front. You can use a clip or clothes pin to hold the kimono and collar in place at the center back. 
Okay, so uh, let's go to uh, step five, the kimono in place. Now that you have an everything in place, make sure your kushi himo is handy because you have to tie it down. Tie the kimono right over your belly button and tie it well because this is the primary stash holding the whole thing together. Tuck the excess length of the kushi himo into itself so it doesn't hang down anywhere. All of the excess kimono material should be above the kushi himo, which you can now fold down over the sash to give the kimono a flat and net look. It is perfectly normal to have this excess material, which will be mostly hidden under the OB later. During this step, you might have to readjust the collar to ensure you have the fist sized gap between the collar and your neck. Well, step six, arrange the colors. After the excess material is neatly folded over the kushi himo sash, you need to arrange your kimono colors. This can be done using the third kushi himo or the current belt. If you use a belt, clip it to the right side of the kimono through the hole under your left arm. Put it around your back and clip the other end to the left front collar on your right side, adjusting the collars so they are symmetrical with about 2 cm of the Nagajuban collar showing. Well, it's almost done. Pull all the creases at the back towards the side seams. If you are using a koshi himo, arrange the collars to be asymmetrical and then put the middle of the tie at the center of your chest. Draw it back with both hands, cross it at the back and return into the front. Tie it in the center. Again, move any greases in the back to the side seams. Tie your second day gym over the koshi himo in the same fashion. Again, just below the bust line. Tuck in the ends of the stash so it looks neat and you are finished putting on the kimono and ready for the next step, putting on an obi stash. So, kimono dressing is finished but don't forget to put on an obi because obi is very important. So for me, I choose this one. Okay, so uh, so there you have it. A step-by-step -step guide to how to wear a kimono by yourself. Don't be discouraged if you have trouble at first. Keep practicing and it will become faster and more natural to you. Before long, you'll have the confidence to wear your kimono out of the world to admire you in. Well, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And uh, stay tuned until the end because the following kimonos are the rental ones. Because here in Japan, you can also rent or you can order by yourself. But it's, of course, it's expensive if you want to buy a new one. But uh, there's also an op option that you can find a rental kimono.